I'm here in northern Arizona, just outside of Kingman. It's here in the Arizona high desert where there have been numerous UFO sightings. Spacecraft flown by visitors from other planets as interested in us as we are in them. Why are we here in this spot? I'll let our witnesses tell you. I was like, I want to show you guys what yeah, I want to show the world. I know there's weird things that happen out here because especially when the sun goes down in the desert, all you got to do is look around. These three lights, they're, they're for real. It's, it's hard to say. I mean, it's a pretty big place, the universe. So to say that we're completely alone, I think, is a little bit in ignorance. They are people like you and me, everyday citizens of Arizona. Every night I go out, I, I keep looking up, hoping we'll see it again, or maybe something that it might have been with a, that I could explain it with. <laughs> Their experiences have taken them from skeptic to profound believers. Uh, our government is deep involved with high technology, and most likely it's been given to us by other races. I saw an extraterrestrial vehicle. I know what I saw. That's what it was. I'm Greta Hill Warren, and this is Flyover Country. My family has a mining operation in the desert. Uh, it's a gold producing mine, and we spend a lot of time in the desert and at night I like to sit up and look at the stars and uh, sometimes we see stars move and the stars that we actually see move they're not really that far up they're just a few hundred feet off the ground and my brother had mentioned his ears were ringing and my uncle and I we we didn't have no ear ringing or anything and as we got in the truck we drove back out onto Signal Road to turn up into Madrell's Wash we actually came up on a craft and the craft actually turned its lights upon us. The lights were about 22 foot in diameter. They were in a series of three sets. The object itself, it was so hard to see because when you look into the light, it kind of almost blinds you a little bit and your eye kind of loses focus, but it's round. And the three lights that are right here, it's like round with three large lights. And like I said, I, I said they were about 22 foot in diameter each light and they're side by side in a straight line. And then when the lights actually go off, they don't actually turn off, they actually, it looks like they suck the light back into itself like a vacuum. And this time that we had actually seen it, it actually made our skin actually red. Since I've seen this object, uh, this three light object, I've had other witnesses that has come to us. Uh, for an example, there was a um, couple, there was two sets of couples, they were riding their quads on the big sandy river. And they happened to come up to the mine and ask if they could have some water for their holding tanks. I said, yeah, sure, go ahead. I said, uh, you know, I'll show you where the well is. You guys can fill up. And the two gentlemen, they came back later that afternoon and said, hey, you know, our wives are fixing, you know, dinner. It's nothing fancy, it's spaghetti. Uh, come on over about nine o'clock. So sure, I went over and had dinner. and. The, the two gentlemen, they said, hey, you know, it's getting late. We're going to, you know, call it a night. And the two ladies, they said, you know, we're going to sit up. We're going to see if we can see those lights again. I said, well, what lights are you talking about? I said, why don't you tell me a little bit more about this? And so they did, I wanted them to describe to me their experience. And they said, yeah, well, we just saw last night these three lights right over here. And I said, well, what did those three lights look like? Well, they were three lights right in a row. I estimated the craft about 2,000 feet long and about 150 feet thick. And it was just moving so silently and approximately 200 feet above people's homes. I haven't seen any aliens, never seen a figure, nothing like this, but objects all the time. I have a camcorder, um, a laser pin, a green laser pin, very bright, shoots very far distance, night vision, um, extra camera, batteries, flash, flashlight, and my quad. I've come up with another theory. I think these craft are not only attracted to nuclear power plants and other things like this, but gold, gold in particular. And we, in this county, we have a lot of gold and we have a lot of sightings. If you live in Mojave County, look up in the sky So 
I've been working for the agency out at uh, Yucca Proving Grounds, which is the uh, Chrysler testing facility, and I'm a test rider for motorcycles. And when I went to swing shift for about seven months, my shift would end about 10 o'clock at night, and on an average three to four times a week looking to the south, we would see, or I would see, I tried to get other people to see it, but they didn't get there in time. But it was big orange dots. And it's kind of weird because it's always almost the same time. 7.15, 7.30, and it goes for an hour. They'll come on for a minute or two, sometimes 15 seconds, sometimes 10 seconds. And if you go out there, you just look to the south, about 10 degrees to the east and about 10 degrees off level ground. And just watch there. Like me, when I'm out in the desert, I always have an eye out looking at a different, you know, always looking for something. I mean, it's, it's not that I expect to see UFOs or aliens or whatever, you know, but I know there's weird things that happen out here because especially when the sun goes down in the desert, all you got to do is look around. The local news from Phoenix, and they were talking about the Phoenix, Phoenix lights. And I'm, so I brought it up and I'm looking at it, and those Phoenix lights are almost identical to what I'm watching out here at Yucca. But it, I mean, people went, filmed them out there, people went crazy, they, and also they just disappeared. And now they're up here. And I'm, I'm, I don't know if it's the same thing or what, but if you look up Phoenix Lights, you will see what I saw. When I did get a chance to stop, I'd holler at people. One guy might see it. Next thing you know, at the end of the day, we all come into the shop. One guy said, hey, I just saw him. But there's one guy that never saw him. And he, he thinks I'm getting these guys to goad him about this. He's like, yeah, whatever, whatever. I'm sure there's unicorns out there also, you know. Actually, I was talking to Terry the other day that I was thinking about going to get some pictures of him to bring with me to show you. Because you can, you can go out tonight and you'll see him. I mean, you will. You will see them. I'm just uh, one man who likes to believe or actually does believe that there's more to this world than what we have. And it's not that I'm trying to find a... Um, What's the word? Uh, I'm not actually trying to find the ET. It's not, that's not what I'm looking for. I just, it makes me feel good to know there's other things out there. This is um, my gray alien tattoo. Uh, pretty standard shape. And um, uh, it's one of my favorites. It's fairly recent. I like it. Um, let's see my other one. This is a very famous uh, crop circle. Well, um, to begin with the, any of the sightings that um, I see out here, uh, I basically I basically see UFOs on a, a nightly basis, you know, and I like make it a point to go out and look for them. A lot of uh, balls of light, spheres of light. Um, recently, I just had a uh, incredible sightings over the Wallachies. It's so as looking over Kingman, or looking off to the side of uh, Kingman, Arizona. The um, uh, we have a mountain range. We have a Wallapai mountain range, and, and it works its way down. Well, the the smaller mountain. While um, myself and some friends were out <laughs> UFO hunting over the mountain, giant giant red orbs. In a, a pattern of three, so it's like, um, like almost like a triangle. So, pow, pow, pow. When I was viewing them um, over the Wallapais, I was actually viewing them from a uh, a town called Golden Valley, Arizona, which is right outside of uh, Kingman. And um, it was, uh, I would have been facing, I would have been facing east, and it would have been more like a southeast direction from me from where I was facing it at the time. It's happening out here. You know, I've been seeing UFOs for years and the ones that happen out here in, in Arizona and Kingman are <laughs> breathtaking. One of my one of my favorite experiences. It was the, one of the closest ones I had. I had built a UFO hunting platform on my roof. Okay. I was seeing UFOs all the time. And the sightings that I'm seeing over, over these mountains are absolutely, I mean, just top, top notch, incredible sightings. The, um, the most recent one, um, which was uh, uh, observed with um, my, one of my friends and my mother 
um, was a giant, it, it was a giant red bar. And underneath that red bar was some lights, white lights, it spaced out evenly. And underneath those white lights was another curved red bar. It looked like a big hamburger. Okay, that's, I know, but that's the best, like, description for what it looked like. But I'm telling you, if you were seeing this over the mountain, it had to be a, a mile or something. I mean, it had to be incredibly huge. Uh, they, um, out here, the, it's a lot more of, um, um, an energy, you know, some, the, they have a light to them and then they do in Indiana too, but out here they are so unbelievably, they put off a power like, you know, just, I mean, it just, take your breath away. You think for best UFO viewing, let you know right now, all right? Before the sun, when the sun goes down, as soon as the sun goes down, when you can't even see the stars, okay, you'll start seeing them. You know, just look up, because they're there. No, they'll come out. And over the mountains, the, I'm, every time I've had a major sighting over the Wallapai Mountains, it's always been around 9.30 to 10.30 within that time frame. I also feel that it does have a lot to do with the, uh, the individuals, because I have a lot of friends um, that you know, I was taking them out UFO hunting and I would show them UFOs and show them what I'm seeing. And um, they got lasers too. We all got lasers, but they don't see. I'm on don't a expedition to find and locate uh, some uh, documents signed by presidents and video pictures and uh, possibly a device. What's in the box? The box has paperwork, uh, top secret data, uh, papers. I, on, from my understanding that uh, it's been signed by presidents throughout Reagan and Eisenhower of these documents. Um, there are video of different floor levels of the Dulce base. Um, supposedly containers of uh, type with uh, people and other half-breeds or whatever uh, in the containers. It's hard to tell what uh, it is. Uh, I don't know until we find it, but uh, from that uh, point, uh, that's what I understand is there, along with a, some sort of a device with the plans on how to build it. Uh, that has three different functions, and I can't really elaborate anymore on that. Uh, my understanding is some of these uh, underground bases have tunnels that uh, uh, travel through train, electromagnetic train and a vacuum tube that uh, can exceed up to Mach 2. Um, they could be escape routes for various uh, politicians or military personnel or or whatever, uh, or the aliens. <laughs> I don't know, I just know that uh, the Dulce New Mexico base is not a very good place. Uh, from all the research that I've done uh, with collaborating with the cow mutilations going on in that area and people, abductions. People all around the world, there's thousands of people disappearing daily. And Nobody knows, but from my understanding, there is a treaty with uh, various alien races, or one of them, in exchange for technology to be able to abduct certain people throughout the world. There's a project uh, that was established in the 60s, it's called Project Serpo. It's an exchange program with what is called the reptilian race, or up into the uh, Beta Reticula star system. And um, this is also connected with the down, uh, dumps facilities or underground bases. My understanding is that uh, the government is aware of five races. Uh, there's different types of grays. Uh, I guess there's the blondes or the Nordics and uh, the reptilian type. 
Uh, and we supposedly have some sort of treaties with them to exchange information along with uh, um, experimenting. <laughs> Uh, what I speculate is happening there is that they're um, working with DNA and gene splicing. Um, you know the old mythical stories about uh, the centaurs and, and what horse, half man, half horse, and half goat, and so on, and, and the unicorns. I believe these things all existed and are There's signs something. of something out there that. Uh, has been manipulating the human race as far as I could see for thousands and thousands of years. The other day, uh, the moon just came up and uh, I was looking out through the window at the moon as it was rising and noticed a star-like uh, object off to uh, the side of it. And it wasn't moving, so I assumed that it was a star. And. Uh, Next thing I notice is that there was some sort of a light beam penetrating the air below it. I was out there trying to film it, and then as I was filming it, it did start to move, and it passed over my head. Uh, what I thought it might have been was some sort of an orb. It was uh, orange in color with a little red and white flashing. It's got some kind of beam coming out of it. It's an orb. Honey, it's an orb. It was dusk, the sun was setting, so it was the darker part of the sky, sort of uh, not quite black, but that dark blue, and the light really stood out. It was sort of an incandescent peachy color. Um, and it would grow very bright and then and then very slowly fade to nothing and then grow bright again. I mean, it probably would stay dark about two seconds and then it would come back on for about five seconds and then fade again. From beginning to end, it lasted about three minutes and it was completely stationary. I mean, it didn't move, it didn't, it didn't go anywhere, up, down, side to side, diagonal, nothing, just stayed in one spot. My mom's sighting of what we saw was she was pretty dumbfounded. I mean, we stood out on the porch for all night to see if it would come back and she was just trying to scramble for an explanation as to what it was. We were hoping it would come back and be just a plane or something, but it, it never did. So she was pretty dumbstruck. So I pulled up to the house and I called my mom out to the porch because I was trying to figure out what it was. and. I called her out and she came out and looked at it and um, of course I thought she was crazy. I figured it was just a plane. Um, I, I got a good look at it though, about, uh, about a minute it was there and it was not moving. It was slightly pulsating and then all of a sudden it just flared like a flare, not flare flare, but just kind of balled out and it was gone. Didn't see any lights, no, uh, no nothing after that. I couldn't even determine a shape. It was just a round ball. Well, to me, it's just, it was something that my husband always enjoyed doing. You know, he, he liked, he always hoped he would see something weird, but uh, never did. And uh, I don't know, you just kind of, as you live with a peer person, you, you kind of take up that little habit of, of always looking up at the sky and things like that. If I see something weird, you know, that's cool. <laughs> but, but so far, nothing up until then that, that I couldn't actually explain away. I definitely think about my father all the time when I look up there. Um, in fact, you know, it could have been him, I don't know, <laughs> pulsating up there. But um, And he's definitely the one that sparked my curiosity. I grew up, you know, conspiracy theorist and Illuminati, New World Order, all that stuff. <laughs> so it's definitely sort of a part of me that's that my, my father passed on to me. I was like, I want to show you guys what it, I want to show the world. I know there's weird things that happen out here because, especially when the sun goes down in the desert, all you got to do is look around. Every night I go out, I keep looking up, hoping I'll see it again, or maybe something that it might have been with a, that I could explain it with. <laughs> These three lights, they're they're for real. They are real. It could be real. Who's to say? Um, it's it's hard to say. I mean, it's a 
pretty big place the universe so to say that we're completely alone i think is a little bit in ignorance there's a fact that uh, uh, our government is deep involved with high technology and most likely it's been given to us by other races i saw an extraterrestrial vehicle i know what i saw that's what it was i know what i saw that's what it was i know what i saw that's what it was i know what i saw that's what it was i know what i saw that's what it was i know what i saw that's what it was i know what i saw that's what it was Cow mutilations going on in that area.